Welcome to our Memorial Mass. Each year we offer a Memorial Mass on All Souls Day to remember our alumni, friends, families, and relatives who are deceased. This year we're not able to gather together on campus, but we still come together to celebrate and remember those who we love and who are in God's arms. I wanna thank Father Landeza and everyone who put this together to allow this great tradition to continue. So as we always do, let us remember that we are in God's holy presence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Often as we gather on this All Souls, it's an opportunity for us as a St. Mary's family to connect and reconnect. Connect with each other as uh, members of this larger St. Mary's community, but reconnect as well too to those who've gone before us, marked with the sign of faith as we do so in these days that uh, uh, All Saints, All Souls, and by some extension, Halloween as well. So what we do today is, again, we recall those who've gone before us. We remember them in a specific and special way today, uh, related to our own uh, sense of who we are as a St. Mary's community. And perhaps we even uh, appropriate for ourselves some of the gifts and some of the attributes of those lives who've gone before us that we may embrace them as a legacy of our faith lived out. Our readings, as well as our gathering, as well as the reading of the names of those who have gone before us this past year, again, reminds us of God's mercy, God's grace, reminds us of the resurrection that awaits us uh, in eternal life, and reminds us as well, too, that we are connected in so many different ways uh, with those uh, who are now living uh, in heaven. And let us pray. Loving, gracious God, as we gather on this uh, solemnity of all souls, may we treasure in our hearts the many lives that have connected us here at St. Mary's, but look at those who've gone before us. Lord, may we appropriate for ourselves faith that is lived out, attributes of those lives of faith, that we may appropriate them for ourselves. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated. And uh, I'm going to go and invite Peter to share with us our first reading uh, this uh, morning. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep so that you may not grieve like the rest of us who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this, 
on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with the word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith in me as well. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back to you and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I'm going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you're going. How are we to know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Please be seated. For a lot of us, this time of the year, particularly as we gather at St. Mary's uh, on this day, is a kind of a transition period. Uh, for a lot of us, I include myself as one who have been presiding at this Mass for many years. It's kind of a, a way that at least I personally ease into kind of what would ordinarily be the holiday season with Thanksgiving and all. But, you know, this year has just been so, so different, so dramatic, so... Uh, so very unusual, and yet this remains, for me at least, just a, a, a kind of a touch point to the transition that goes on. Transition is a real a, a, a appropriate word for what these past three days have been, because oftentimes we don't, we, we may look at all saints and all souls and forget about, um, forget about them when we all, as a society, focus on Halloween, right? And yet Halloween all saints and all souls are so intricately uh, connected to each other on a lot of different ways. This recognition of Halloween as the eve of All Hallows, which is, of course, All Hallows is All Saints and All Souls as well, too. We particularly think about our, those who are connected to our St. Mary's family. Uh, we gather at this beautiful campus uh, to remind us of the ways in which we are connected and the ways in which we are, uh, have the shared experience of he being here at Peralta Park. So also, and I'll talk a little bit about that later on. The whole, uh, for us All Saints, when we think about All Saints, it's the church's official way of uh, setting aside those women and men who have lived exemplary lives in following the path of Christ and uh, are filled with the kinds of, kinds of grace that the church recognizes as being uh, heroes and heroines. Uh, we also connect to those people in our own lives on All Saints Day, who perhaps are interceding on our, on our behalf, who are no longer with us as well, too. So that's kind of the essence of all saints. All souls reminds us also that, uh, that we remember in a special way uh, those who have died and those who go before us, and that they, too, intercede on our behalf uh, in heavenly li and, and eternal life. And so we oftentimes see in our own culture, American culture, we see altercitos, uh, and Dia de los Muertos, which is something we've, in, we've inherited from our uh, Mexican brothers and sisters, at least here in California. Again, this reminder of maybe not to be so, uh, to, I'm not afraid of death, I don't want to say that, but to be comfortable, comfortable with being able to be in relationship uh, with those who've gone before us uh, in the context of their eternal life as well, and that they intercede for us in, in, uh, in heaven. So again, as I mentioned, yesterday's celebration of all saints recognizes those whom the church is designated as having lives that are exemplary, as leading lives of faith, responding as followers of Christ. Women and men who have taken to heart the gospel reading we just heard from John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. These words remind us that God has, God has prepared a place for all of us, and that call to saintly values is our call as well, too. As we see Jesus... Believe in him as the way, the truth, and the life. So again, both all saints and all souls reminds us that we're connected to this great multitude that we hear about in that first reading from 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4, verses 13 to 18, reassuring us that in the final days and at the final times and the final verses, uh, we shall always be with the Lord. So all saints, all saints. So, so those of us who are raised in like a more traditional format of Catholicism, uh, really, at least as a kid, we, we connected with the saints. I mean, I remember my parents had this, uh, Butler's Lives of the Saints. You remember Butler's Lives of the Saints? And all you, all you, yeah, it's, because it would give us an idea of what people's, uh, his, the history of the various saints that uh, were part of our own Catholic tradition. And particularly those of us who have actually saint names. Uh, my middle name is Jerome. So I've always been fascinated by St. Jerome, who was a, a scripture scholar. Uh, I remember when I was a confirmation back uh, when those of us who had to have uh, saints' names for confirmation, I picked Michael because there was a time that I wanted to be in the army. 
And I was in the Army about 50 pounds ago, but they wouldn't let me back in because I'm, I'm 50 pounds heavier. But there is a sense that there was some kind of attribute about Michael that I wanted to model in my own life. Uh, St. Damien, those of you who know anything about St. Damien, who work with uh, lepers, those who are afflicted by Hansen's disease and Molokai. Uh, my mother's from Molokai, she's not a leper. Um, but uh, there was a sense of being able to connect with that particular saint as well. Others have connected to uh, St. John Baptist de la Salle. Others, perhaps St. Christopher. Uh, others, perhaps St. Francis of Assisi. Others, Anthony, the patron saint of lost causes or so. Um, other patron saints that we recognize as part of our own tradition here at St. Mary's is obviously St. John Baptist de la Salle and St. Mary's because that's who, who, uh, that's who we named after. So there. Um, it's the qualities that each of these folks exhibited as part of their own Christian journey as followers of Christ that enables us to remember them in a very specific way on all saints and at some level all souls as well too. As, we, as I mentioned before, uh, we call today specifically to mind those who aren't with us anymore, those who've gone before us, as I mentioned, uh, those who are in the embrace of God and eternal life. The chances are that the church may not recognize them as saints, Personally, I don't know if any of my family or friends who have gone before us would fall into the category of saint. I certainly wouldn't. Uh, but yet we continue to remember them and know that they intercede on our behalf uh, in heaven. Uh, as we remember those loved ones, particularly those connected to our St. Mary's family, it's a moment of healing for us. Last year, my high school class gathered for, my high school, St. Mary's College High School, Berkeley, class of 1979. Uh, we gathered for our 40th uh, uh, anniversary of graduation from here at St. Mary's. And we read a list of all those uh, guys who were not part of uh, our graduation, or I'm sorry, all the guys who were not with us last year who had died. Uh, the two I keep remembering are the two we lost when I was here as a student. Uh, when I was a junior, uh, we lost our classmate George Alexander to a tragic accident. Uh, we lost the year after that, uh, Malcolm LaClosse, uh, who died in a tragic car accident uh, up in the Oakland Hills. So even before we left St. Mary's, we had lost two of our own in our class uh, who were not able to be with us at graduation. And as we gathered last year to celebrate our 40th over at um, Skates on the Bay and here, we remembered in a specific way uh, those members of our own class who weren't uh, at that uh, gathering because of, the, of their own passing. So maybe on a day like this, as we gather for all souls, particularly to St. Mary's in Berkeley, they will remember maybe perhaps those uh, in our larger extended family at St. Mary's or even those specific to our class uh, who, uh, who are interceding for us on our behalf uh, in God's graces. And remember the qualities that perhaps they lived, the joy which they brought to many of us, and perhaps maybe the legacies uh, they leave as well in this world. Uh, my hope is that with uh, these feasts of all saints and all souls, that we can embrace the qualities that have distinguished a life lived in faith, and that by the grace of God, uh, we may have eternal life and be raised on the last day as well. Amen. So this time, I'm going to invite Ben to come forward and share with us uh, our prayers to the faithful. We will respond to each phrase in prayer with the phrase, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the living spirit of John Baptist de La Salle, the Christian brothers, and their gift of the LaSallean mission that guides the spirit of St. Mary's College High School and gives us our strength, we give thanks and praise. Lord, Lord hear in our your prayer. mercy, hey, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the loving care of St. Mary's students, faculty, and staff, past and present, families and friends, may they be safe and live their lives filled with hope, joy, and peace. Lord, Lord in, your mercy, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the many people who die by violence, war, injustice, and phantom each day, Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly by these sins against your love and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. 
Lord, Lord in your, your mercy, mercy hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We come together in faith and confidence to pray for those who have died from COVID and other illnesses. Continue to strengthen our hope as we mourn and grieve those who have passed away. Lord, in your mercy, your mercy hear, hear our prayer. For those who are feeling alone or isolated, people are feeling extra weary and burdened, alone and afflicted, Lord, please give us all the strength and encouragement needed to know they may feel alone, but they are loved and cared for. Lord, in your, your mercy, mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and for our public officials. May they promote justice and peace for all people. Lord, Lord in, in your, your mercy, mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our deceased alumni, friends, family members, relatives, and for all who continue to live in our hearts and our souls. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Deceased alumni, Gary Amantiti, class of 1958, Phil Avalos, class of 1983, Bob Kaya, class of 1952, Steve Gigliotto, class of 1959. Robert Gorman, class of 1963. Arthur Gross, class of 1949. Mike Kenny, class of 1959. James Lydon, Class of 1961. Torrance Lyle, Class of 1982. Alexander Pavoff, Class of 1950. David Purefoy, Class of 1993. Louis Rain Feller, Class of 1950. 70. Donnie Ross, class of 1976. Corey Sanders, class of 1977. Victor Stevens, class of 1979. Jack Stewart, class of 2013. Charles Sullivan, class of 1989. Craig Torres, class of 1973. Michael Wadsworth, class of 1952. Deceased Friends of St. Mary's. Angie Acornero, mother of Dawn, 1968. Henry Acornero, father of Dawn, 1968. Barbara Banks, mother of Ben, 2020. Karen Barrett, daughter of Bobby Barrett and former staff member. Berwick Batiste, Father of Michael Odom, 1969, Keith, 1975, Ronald, 1978, and Patrick, 1982. Grandfather of Lauren Batiste Smith, 2005, 
and Patrick Batiste, Jr., 2009. Peggy Jo Brody, wife of Jack, 1947. Mr. Buckner, father of Rich Buckner, coach. Ashley Capra, mother of Aiden, 2023. Gino Kaja, crab feed pasta cook, father of John, 1975, Joe, 1977, and uncle of David Petri, 1975. Armanita Dade, mother of Michael, 1996, and grandmother of Adrian, 2008, Xavier, 2013, and Michaela Boone, 2018. Angela Gann, mother of Sarah Bierman, 2009. Betty Griffin, aunt of Osher D. Nunley, 2000, and Jacqueline Massey, 2004. Anna Hagler, wife of Bob Hagler, former coach. Daniel Haley, father of Daniel Simon, 2024. Michael Isola, father of Mary, 2023. Eunice Livingston, grandmother of Osher D. Nunley, 2000, and Jacqueline Massey, 2004. Rosemarie Massaris, sister of Mr. Lawrence Puck, class of 1978. Louis Perotti, former teacher. Vince Pistello, father of Michael, 1998. Nancy Potts, wife of Tony, 1948. Jennifer Reed, mother of Olivia, 2021. And Tom Wolfer, grandfather of Edward, 2010. Nathaniel Hill, 2012. Simone, 2021. And Georgia Rogers, 2023. Daniel, 2009, Anne, 2011, Madeline, 2014, and Catherine Wolfer, 2018. May all the souls of people whose names were read and those who were not mentioned, but live forever in our hearts. May they have the reward in God's kingdom. Grant them everlasting peace. Lord, Lord in your mercy, mercy, hear our, our prayer. Loving, gracious God, with faith in your goodness, we present to you these many names, these many needs. We ask you to hear us and with your will, please answer us. We ask us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, my sisters, and pray, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice on our hands for the praise and glory of God's name for our good and good balls, holy church. Amen. Lord, look favorably upon our offering so that your departed servants may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we're all united, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It's our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed, re blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful people, Lord, life has changed and not ended. And with, when this earthly dwelling uh, turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts of powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all of your clergy. Remember all those who've gone before us, mark with the sign of faith on this, the commemoration of all souls. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, St. John Baptist de la Salle, and all the saints, who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be freed from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And I would invite you in a socially existed fashion to give each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
and let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your departed servants, from whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. A word of thanks to Azure D for always remembering, as we do at this time, uh, to have this gathering that commemorates, again, the lives of uh, our St. Mary's community and remember those who are now uh, in eternal life. Um, we have to Elliot uh, for the music, for uh, Peter and Ben for your proclamation, for Brother Dan uh, for your uh, editing skills, uh, filming skills, production skills, uh, and uh, just a, an invitation and gratitude to all of you who join us on this, the commemoration of all souls here at St. Mary's College High School. Uh, I wish we could offer you uh, a little something afterwards that we would generally do, but uh, eh, pour yourself a drink and toast to, to, to our uh, beloved in heaven. We good? We cool? The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This Mass has ended. Go now in the peace of Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God.